Welcome to the Lightroom 2 podcast. My name is RC. Now, in this video, what I want to do is I want to talk to you about how to be able to take your images and export them to the web. Now, not just using the web module, but using the other part of the module that you're probably not used to using. And the module I'm talking about is the FTP portion of it. Now, let's take a look here, right? You have a regular Lightroom flash gallery, and let's just say that we go in and we update some of this basic information, right? So we call this sample gallery. Now, before I do anything else, let me just kind of show you. I just selected a series of images that I have in a collection, and I moved over to the web module. I haven't done anything else. Now, once I've done that, I'll come over here and I'll type in RC's sample gallery, and I'll say for my new video. Obviously, for my new video. A web gallery created using Lightroom. Let's just say that I don't want to tell people that I did this using Lightroom. And then my contact name, I'm just going to put contact RC. And then I'll change my mail to a username. I'll go ahead and I'll click on, I'll type in, let's say, RC at uh, testing.com. Right. So I've made some basic changes into this, nothing that we haven't covered inside of the web module series that we've done. Now, once I have all of that stuff all set, that's pretty straightforward. The part that I wanted to talk about the most, though, is here in this one section, right? Because more often than not, what we tend to do is we tend to just kind of hit the upload, the export button, and we put it onto the desktop, and then we hand it off to somebody and have somebody go ahead and place it on the web for us, or we use programs like go to my PC, or we use programs like Qt FTP to be able to upload all of that information. Now, the cool part about all of this stuff is that inside of Lightroom 2, you have a FTP uploader that you can use to be able to do this stuff. Now, if you think it's confusing, it really isn't. If you've owned your own website, if you've set up yourself to be able to have a website, every authorization email that you get back from somebody, right? When they say, congratulations, here is your website. This is the information that you need to be able to log in. They'll tell you your FTP username is this. Your FTP password is this. Your FTP path or your FTP location is this. So it'll be all spelled out for you, be it GoDaddy, be it uh, web hosts, be it Bluehost, or iPower Web, whatever it is that you're using, they're going to spell it out for you. On the off chance that they don't, all you have to do is just contact them and tell them, all right, well, what is my FTP username? What is my FTP password? And what is my FTP domain name? What is the address that I'm going to do? Once you have all of those things, you can just click on edit here in this section and automatically place them here. So that's where I'm getting my information, right? So I'm going to say that I'm going to put this in www flipthatpage.com. Now let me show you what flipthatpage.com looks like right now. Right? If I go to flipthatpage.com, I have nothing in it. I wanted to leave it like this just to kind of show you what it is that we're going to do with this. So I'm going to minimize this and I'm going to put in my name, which is flipthatrc, and the password that is, really, did you think I was going to tell you my password? No. So here we have a section that says server path, right? And this is going to be the location of where you're going to want to put all of this information. And again, they'll tell you more often than not, it'll be something like public underscore HTML, or they'll tell you that it'll be www, or sometimes it'll say something like HTTP doc. Look in your email, it'll tell you, I'm going to leave mine by default, and I'm going to see what happens with all of this stuff. The other thing that I usually tell people is make sure that you have a passive mode set for data transfer. Sometimes, without getting into the technical details, sometimes when you have not passive set up, what will happen is it'll turn around and it'll start sending something and then it'll just stop and it'll just hang and hang and hang and hang and hang. And I almost always tell everybody, all right, if you can't upload something, make sure that you're set to passive mode. And this is on FTP programs. Take a look. If you set it up to not passive, it'll almost tell you, look, this isn't going to work. Always make sure that you're set to passive mode. Now, once we have all of this information all set, I'm going to click on OK. Notice it doesn't tell you that it's going to do it yet. To do that, what you need to do is you need to click on the upload button. Now, I'll go ahead and 
for good measure, I'll put in my password and I'll upload. Notice that it checked the status and automatically went in and did an upload of this. Now, I have my Qt FTP program running because what I wanted to do is I wanted to be able to show you what it's going to look like when it uploads all of this information and a couple of things that you can do with this to be able to make it a little bit better for you. Now that it's all set, I'm going to go back to flipthatpage.com and check out what's going on there. So I'll type in flipthatpage.com and I'll hit the enter key. Notice that there's nothing, right? I can't get into it. But well, what's the name of the folder that we wanted to be able to create? Take a look. Remember, you said here in the upload section that you wanted to put it into a subsection called photos. So what I'm going to have to do is I'm going to have to go to flipthatpage.com and type in photos. Let's get do that one more time here. Put that page.com forward slash photos. Hit the enter key. Not bad. Now all of that information sits inside of the flip that page.com. Now, a couple of things that you can do here to be able to make this better. Notice that when we did this, we put it into a subdirectory called folders. I don't necessarily like doing that. Instead, what I would do is I would put a main gallery folder in place and then put all of the exports that I do inside of that one main gallery. Because if you set yourself up like this, right, and let's just say that this is a shoot for Steve, then you're going to put it into subfolder Steve, then the next time you're going to put it into a subfolder Roger, then the next one you're going to put it into a subfolder Tom, and you're going to continue to do this over and over and over, and you're going to notice that after 20 of them, now you have 20 separate folders running around all over the place it's easier for you to turn around and just make a folder called gallery add a forward slash and then in this case make it Steve one then export that out now I've already exported it out just so I'm going to show you something now that you have that done then you can come over to the next one and then go back into the web module and then for this one again it's going to be gallery because everything is going to be held in that one gallery folder and then let's just say that we call this blues then export that one in the exact same process the way that we did the last one right once you do that then you go into this flip that page.com notice that there's nothing there but now if you go to gallery Steve one the Steve one folder is inside of the gallery folder and it's a lot more organized and then if you go to gallery blues all of this stuff is in gallery blues so it organizes everything and puts everything into this bigger folder called gallery and then if you need to be able to move that offline all you have to do is delete one folder instead of 20. so it's a great way to be able to kind of manage how you're going to publish things on the web my name is rc thanks for watching